So let's go ahead and look at this from start to finish. So if I was going to create a work order, so somebody calls in and they need to schedule service, I'm going to first go into work orders. Once I go into work orders, I can see all of the currently active work orders in the system, whether they're scheduled or unscheduled. I'm going to go ahead and click on new and it's going to ask me for information around this work order. So the first thing that I'm going to need to identify is who is the service account? So where are we physically going to be going to actually perform this work inside the system? So I'll pick the service account that I want to work with. And then it's going to pre-populate the billing account, which is basically the, the company or the, the organization that's going to be responsible for paying the bill. Now, if I scroll down, I can see in here that the system status is going to come in with a system status of unscheduled. Now, the next thing that I'll have to do in here is I want to identify the what's called the primary incident type. Now, a lot of the times that agents and organizations will have specific product or specific services that they will provide that they get all the time. So what we can do is we can create incident types and use those as templates to determine the type of service and the work that needs to be done. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is going to be a MRI inspection. It realizes based upon the incident type that this is going to take roughly about two hours for us to go ahead and do. So it's going to show us the incident type of inspection inside the system. Now, if I continue to scroll down, it is automatically associated the work order type as an inspection in the system. It's associated it with the default price list. If I needed to prioritize this based upon different scenarios, I can modify the priority. I know that the work location is going to take place on site. I know that this customer is in Washington and I can see what currency information that I want to work with. Now this customer has also told us that they want somebody to come out today basically from either 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. So what I can do in here is I say that I've promised the customer that specific time frame window so I can come into the system here and I can modify that to assure myself that I have the appropriate time window that I've promised for the customer. So I can switch this from uh, the available time that I want to work with. And then the finally, how do I need to calculate tax on the products and services that are going to be rendered as part of this work order? So when I come into here, I'm going to pick a sales tax code. I know that this is an out-of-state customer, so I'm going to choose out-of-state. And now I can go ahead and save and close this work order in the system. Now once it's save and closed, it's ready for us or anybody who would be a part of our dispatching scenario to go out and schedule this inside the system. So now I'm going to go ahead and navigate into the schedule board. And for purposes of this end-to-end -end demo, I'm actually going to demonstrate this working through the process of manually scheduling this with the schedule board. So when I go into the schedule board, it's going to load it's going to load all the schedule boards that are available for that particular dispatcher. So keep in mind that there may be different schedule board needs depending upon the type of resource or item that you want to work with in the system. Now in here, I know that I need to have somebody who is in a specific territory. So I can come over here to the filter board and I can filter for Washington. And what this is going to do is this is going to filter all of my resources based upon those specific situations. So it's gonna filter them to Washington. Now at this point, I can hover over each one of these resources and the system itself is gonna show me what skill sets these resources have. So I can see if this is a work order that requires a specific skill set or a specific type of skill, I can see what technicians inside our organization have those skill sets. I also have the capabilities to hover over any one of these technicians and interact with them via instant message or email or even phone systems if if I have the phone systems integrated. Now down here on the bottom, I can also scroll down and I can see the actual unscheduled work orders in the system. So here I can see the different work orders that we've defined and here's the one that I just recently created for Alpine Ski House. So I can look at the one for Alpine Ski House and I can see the time window frame promised based upon the actual service preferences that we've defined for that particular situation. So now I can come into here and I'm just going to move this work order real quick. So now I can come into here and I can drag this work order up into the schedule board. Now you'll notice that as I drag this over into different time frames, I'm actually getting different color codes. Those color codes are informing me that this is not within the time that we promised the customer. As I move into the time that we promised the customer, now that changes to green. I can simply go ahead and let go of this. It's now going to go in the system and it is going to create what is called a bookable resource booking. This is now going to be assigned to, in this case myself, and I will be able to access this work order inside the application when I switch to the field service mobile application. 
As a technician, if I switch to the field service mobile application, I can come in and I can look at my bookings. This is going to show me all of the bookings that are currently assigned to me. Now I can see that I do have a booking for today at 1015 um, for Alpine Ski House, which was the work order that we just created and just scheduled inside the application. As I click on this work order, I can see specific information. And so now that I know that I need to travel to this customer, I have the capabilities to come up into here and change my booking status to traveling. This is going to be reflected on the schedule board and now the dispatcher would be able to see that I am actually in route traveling to that customer and working on that information accordingly. Now as I was going through and arriving at the customer location, now I can change my status if I need to to in progress. And now from here, I have the ability to go into the different service tasks and obtain that information as part of the work order. When I am done, I can come down into the customer signature area. I can obtain a customer signature. I can save this from that, from that aspect. And then I can update the status of the work order to complete it. This is going to reflect that status change in the system and then save my changes accordingly. So here you can see kind of a complete end-to-end -end process how the work order can get created, can get scheduled using the dispatcher, and then actually be completed by the technician when they're sitting out on site.